Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Motivate You, the Winner Circle with your host, June Archer. It is time to get into an, another amazing story. My next guest, an amazing story. Um, however, this young man defied the odds uh, and his story, somewhat unique, but very inspirational. A member of the NFL, North Carolina team, I want to introduce you to now my good friend and brethren. Please give it up for Chris Manhurst. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Listen, I'm glad to have you, man. I hope all is well during this time uh, that we are social distancing, or I like to call it physical distancing and social connecting. So right. I hope you and yours are safe. I want you to take us back to 2014, 2015, and what it felt like uh, as an undrafted player, making the way from college, you were a basketball star, D1, and made the transition to an NFL player. Take us back to that time and, and what it felt like and, and what it meant to even make that transition. Um, I, I think it was definitely a blessing. Um, and it, I, I guess initially hearing the opportunity, there's a lot of mixed emotions. Um just trying to take on something I've never even considered trying. And, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, it was an inopportune, you know, opportunity, <laughs> if you will. But it was one of those things where I just was, it was a whirlwind for me. It was probably one of the most challenging things that I ever had to, ever had to do. Um, and it, I, I, I guess I could compare it to, it's like learning a new language. You know, you're so used to, being ingrained in a culture and a language and now you up and go somewhere else and try to assimilate and try to learn at the speed of everybody else. It was definitely challenging for me. For you, uh, because, you know, we were speaking offline, uh, because of your culture, you and I both of West Indian descent, how was that foundation for you, uh, for some who may not even understand, like it's really deep rooted in working hard and pride and inspiration and motivation for you. How much of your culture did you lean on while you made this transition? A whole lot of it. Um, and I think that goes back to uh, my upbringing and, and my parents and the values that they instilled in us from an early age. And I, the older I get, the more I appreciate how much those type of uh, characteristics and traits matter um, in terms of hard work, in terms of, you know, making no excuses in terms of, just just uh, uh, being very adaptive, just assimilating to change, those type of things. And uh, I think it paid dividends a long way, obviously. Well, as a as a basketball player, your your career was was a highlight reel. Um, for me, looking at that and saying, wow, Chris made the transition. Was the work ethic the same for you, even though it was something that you picked up because for me, I, I believe if you're just a naturally gifted uh, athlete, you know, I have a friend, you you may know him, Dwight Freeney. Dwight Freeney played soccer. He was a goalie uh, until he actually, his senior year, picked up football, went to Syracuse and then drafted and became this this guy who who well, more than likely is going to be in the, in the Hall of Fame. But for him, once again, a West Indian uh, cultural household perspective uh for you you know what was that for you um i think the work ethic uh, transitioning from sports to sport the work ethic has been uh, pretty consistent um the only difference is the adjusted adjustments uh to you know learning a new sport um and i think that goes back to like i said just the foundation i feel like the way i was raised anything that's put in front of me um, as far as goals are concerned, I can accomplish, accomplish it based on how hard I work. So that's no different than uh, basketball, uh, football now. And obviously, I'm not going to be playing football forever. But whatever that next avenue is for me, uh, the work ethic is going to carry over. Now, I love your perspective on planning all the way through and, and, and being open to possibilities that come. Uh, and some of the things I've seen with you, you said, 
you have to make sure that you know what the next step is. What what are you going to do after football? If, even if you're you're playing another sport. And for those people who, Chris, have worked uh, 15, 20 years, they're getting re ready to retire. For them, uh, what piece of advice would you give them for those individuals? Because everybody's not playing a, a professional sport. Uh, but for those who, who you know, uh, they've worked at the light company. You know, we talked about, you know, family members are, who are in the medical profession. Once you retire, what piece of advice do you give them? Because the dream doesn't stop. Like, life doesn't stop after that. What is the best piece of advice that you could give somebody uh, who's looking to transition or who's like, I don't know what I'm going to do after I do this? Well, from my personal experience, I started thinking about that from day one. Mm. I, I'm, I'm still in the game right now, but I am constantly thinking about what that next is and trying to do whatever I can to ensure um, future success. Uh, I, I think certain things aren't guaranteed, obviously, but I look at it like building a house. You know, you lay the bricks and you just keep building. And one opportunity turns into the next. I could go back to my upbringing and and the, the traits that my parents instilled in me. It allowed me to propel myself and take advantage of my opportunities to excel at a uh, uh, collegiate level. Um, and then you take that and keep building. You go to school, you get your master's degree, you work hard. Okay, it opens up another opportunity for me to play football. You continue to do those things. You take internships, you learn about financial literacy, you learn about how successful people think and what they have to do in order to really propel themselves and set them up. So that has always been my mindset. Um, and, and I think that it, it's definitely going to pay dividends later for me. Your journey, somewhat unorthodox for some people. Uh, and I think you even said it, like some people may look at it and envy and say, you mean this guy didn't play any football? Like now he, he, he got a spot. Um, what were, if there was someone or, or a piece of advice or a gem or, key to success that you were given along that journey from making that transition, uh, because we know it's not an easy one uh, by far. Uh, getting there is one thing, but staying there is another. Is there a piece of advice that you got from, say, your parents or a friend or even a coach that allowed you in those times of, you know what, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Uh, I know that I read a quote that uh, coach at, at Buffalo Bills said that more than likely, uh, Chris isn't going to make the squad. And, and you and you didn't. You were released. You were released more than once, but you ended up on a team. For you, during that time and along that journey, was there a piece of advice or words of wisdom that you got that allowed you to get through those periods? Absolutely. Um, and my outlook on life has obviously changed in, throughout the past couple of years, and I'm sure it's going to be ever-evolving. But um, I remember when I initially started um, being a person that never played the sport and comparing myself to teammates, uh, potential opponents that's been doing this their whole lives. And, you know, over time, I, I realized that comparing myself to people is not probably the most effective way to help myself. Um, that energy that I use to compare myself to other people could have been used on me and could have mm -hmm. allowed me to go much further than I initially did. So picking up certain things along along the line like that has certainly helped and allowed me to, you know, face adversity, take it on the chin and just and just keep going, you know, knowing what I want and, and having a clear vision and goal and not allowing anything to get in the way um, from you getting there is I guess it's one of those unteachable things and you just learn along the way. But that has certainly helped me along the way. Do you find that? The physical attributes to play the sport versus the mental attributes uh, help or hinder what you're doing? Because some people are just gifted naturally, physically. Mm -hmm. But then there are some people who the mental toughness, I don't know if you can teach mental toughness, uh, but how does that kick in for you? Because as a basketball player, football player, two different worlds, I guess athletics plays a huge part in it. But you're going into a sport where, you know, these guys, like, they they get busy. It's a little different. Basketball is a little more of a, a finesse game, in my opinion. Uh, how did you get your mental right uh, to even play the sport? I think that just starts started with me just being comfortable with the idea. Um, I remember the first time that I was on the sideline um, and I just saw a live hit, you know, 
the hit from that perspective versus a hit from watching TV, it's totally different. Wow. So being a person that, you know, is tr is trying to learn the sport and has never got hit or tackled in his life and to see somebody get boomed, you know, it made me start to question, like, really, is this for me, you know? And is this more of a physical hurdle or is it a mental hurdle? And for me, uh, looking at it, I had all the physical traits to obviously play and compete compete with guys uh if not i wouldn't be in that position but it was about me just getting past that mental hurdle um getting past that mental hurdle and talking to myself and saying listen they get dressed just like you mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> they're practicing just like you you're in meetings just like them what makes you any different you might have to work a little bit harder you might have to do a little bit more because you're already behind the curve but eventually if you do more than them you're going to catch up and surpass them if you continue working. So that has always been my mindset. And, you know, sometimes it takes little things like that to develop that callousness in a way. How important is it for those who are interested in playing a sport, whether it's football, whether it's basketball, whether it's soccer, those who may be even interested in the music and entertainment business, how important uh, to you do you feel it is to have mentors around you and people that you can confide in and, and be able to kind of just be a sponge. How important is it having mentors uh, along your journey to learn about the craft? Because you are you are a practitioner of that particular, but this is what you do. But how important is it to have people who you would either aspire to be or who, who have knowledge and wisdom uh, to be able to take what you can from them and apply it to your life? whether on the field or off. How important it is for mentors It cut off for a minute, sorry. Yeah. How important is it to have a mentor uh, in your profession or any profession if you're trying to, trying to be basketball, football, baseball, soccer, music industry, entertainment business? Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely important. Um, I, I guess it's one of those things where you have to learn from somebody and um, part of your success is surrounding yourself with successful people that's done it or that's is on the same track as you so learning from several mentors along the way i i, I could name a couple off the top of my head greg olson um benjamin watson when i was on the saints um there's a lot of guys that really uh took me under their wing and, and tried to help me they didn't have to you know but I, I i guess it was their way of um paying it forward and i guess it's on me to you know bring people up with me as well as as long as I'm continuing on this, on this journey. How important is diet for you moving forward as we go through this season of uh, coronavirus and what we're doing for you? How do you prepare your body to be able to withstand what you have to go through for 16 weeks uh, or more, depending on how far you get into the playoffs and eventually the Super Bowl? You see here, I'm, I'm speaking it into existence for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how important is that piece of it because uh i want listeners and, and viewers to understand that what you put in your body um allows you to perform uh and gets the optimum performance out of what you're doing if done properly right and i, I look at my body as probably especially in the profession that i'm doing it's my biggest investment it is my biggest investment what i consume um what what I take, what supplements I take. There's a whole lot of layers in terms of what works for you as an individual, but taking pride in in in, in what you eat and your diet and taking care of yourself can only help me in this in this particular particular field and also helping people in general just living longer, living a more fulfilling, uh risk free longer life. What is the best piece of advice you could give someone who's trying to pursue their dreams? and looking to change careers, but has no idea the gravity of it, but you could give them a, a word of advice right now that will help them uh, as they travel these uncharted territories. I think it's just a matter of letting them know that it's never gonna be a, a rushed process. Like we're ever evolving, making that transition, especially I guess for somebody like me that's been playing sports my whole life and making that transition on the drop of a dime to figuring out something else, it's not the easiest thing. And um, I would tell that person to just be patient and, and try to understand what they're good at. 
you know, uh, I think those are one of the two hardest things, figuring out what you're good at and then also enjoying what you do and then figuring out a way to make money off of what you're good at. So that, that's one of those things that over time, um, you know, hopefully sooner than later you, you figure it out. But sometimes it's not going to it's not going to happen as fast as you you anticipate. Yeah, I tell people some days that it takes about five to 10 years to become an overnight success if you're willing to put in the work. And I believe that uh, talent is overrated. Um, I think that you really have to have a passion for what it is that you're doing. So I appreciate, totally appreciate your advice. For you, what is the the song that belongs on your soundtrack of life that allows you to go get it every day or when, when you get on that field, allows you to, to be the best that you could be that you could share with our audience today? I guess the first song that, comes to my mind is is bob marley don't worry Be mm. happy. and uh, i think there's so many ways that you could interpret that song you know how it resonates to you but for me um it, there's always going to be adversity there's always going to be hiccups there's always going to be bumps in the road whether it be in your sports life your personal life at home but sometimes you have to take a step back and realize that you know, you're you're in the, your position for a reason. You know, I I can't help but to think that God forbid, if my career was to end today, my outlook would be, damn, look what I did. You know, look what I did. Look what I was able to do. Look what I was able to accomplish. Look at the the people and the networks that I were, was able to leverage and take advantage of. So I think it's just having an attitude of gratitude and um, looking at things from you know the glass half half full instead of half, half empty and i think that'll also you know help you along the way in trying to figure it out figure out what it is that you want to uh look forward to i mean bob was a poet uh, he he said it best right don't worry about a thing because every little thing it'll be all right be all right chris where can we follow you where can they check you out with the because we're going to speak into existence you're going to be carolina Carolina Panthers, but where can they follow you? Where can they see you? And what's next for you while while you're here during the offseason? What's next for you? What do you got planned? Well, at this particular time, I'm just trying to, you know, get as much, stay on routine as much as possible given the circumstances. Um, they've obviously closed down stadiums and um, nobody planned for, you know, coronavirus to really take over the country like this. However, um, I think this also poses as an opportunity for me to really reflect and really shape my mind and focus on what's really important. You know, I, there's a lot of things that we could complain about, you know, and if my biggest complaint is I can't leave my home with food, heat, <laughs> shelter to go do other things. I think, you know, you, you kind of have to put things in perspective because you have a disease that's you know, um, taking the lives of people, taking away jobs from people, taking away the ability for people to provide for themselves and their families. So it, it allows me to look at things from another lens, definitely. Chris, I appreciate you being on the show. We wish you luck in the future. Whatever it is that you're doing on the field and off the field, we will be supporting you. Uh, and um, be safe out here. God bless you and your family. And um, I'd love to have you back on the show once we get everything back under the way and we, we see what you're doing in the season and just get a, a quick, you know, uh, shout out to, to see how you're doing and, and just, you know, making sure that you, you're doing right and doing well and being successful. So we okay, appreciate, appreciate you. it. Listen, guys, make sure you follow this young man. He's doing some amazing things. And we look forward to making sure that not only is he successful on the field, but all his endeavors after that and surrounding his, his communities are successful as well. Please follow him, like him. If you had the opportunity to go see him at a game, do that as well. You just checked out the Winner's Circle Motivate You. This is June Archer. Thank you guys so much for tuning in.